Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars, some of the most talented people, and we tick both of those boxes today with Marco Pierre White. How are you? Hello, how are you? Well, I'm delicious, thank you. I've just spent an hour with you chatting about everything and all sorts, and it's so thrilling because I've watched you for so long, and you're so brilliant at what you do, and you just get on with it, don't you? You're not interested in the nonsense and shenanigans. Well, I suppose I've got to thank my dear father for that. For the simple reason is, is when I was a young boy, he always taught me to be myself. He always taught me to roll up my sleeves, to do my job. And that's what I've always done, really, my job. And you know, I don't try to be anything but a cook. You know, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a talent. I'm no one special. I'm like everybody else in this world. What I crave is ordinary, which I said to you earlier, is I come to work and I do my job. And my job today, really, if I'm honest, is inspiring the young, like having the, the catering students come and visit me this afternoon and show me respect and kindness. And I only hope that my stories and my philosophies and my thoughts inspire them. The last thing I said to them today is a story is more important than a recipe. A recipe can confuse you, but a story can inspire you. When I was a young boy, I had that privilege of working with people like the great Michael Lawson at the Box Street, the great owners of the Box Street, Mr. Reed and Mr. Long, Ken Lamb the Baker, Albert Roux, Pierre Kaufman, Nicola Dennis, the great Raymond Blanc. But what did they really teach me? Was how to tell stories, how to inspire people. That's what's important. A recipe, as I say, it can confuse. It reminds me of something that Brian Clough said to me many years ago when I was just starting in the business. He said, just remember, son, nobody will ever remember what you say, but how you make them feel. And I thought that was so profound. It's a bit like that with a, a dining experience, isn't it? Or just sitting opposite somebody like yourself. You, you don't remember the intricacies of it. You just remember how it made you feel. For me, it's all about the emotional impact. The impact a person has on me. The impact an establishment has on me. The impact a plate of food has on me. And so Brian Clough was 100% correct. We forget, up to a certain extent, 90% of what people say to us. But what we, we will never forget is the emotional impact that individual has had on us. And when people have that ability to touch others, whether it's you with your radio, whether it's people like Brian, whether it's individuals like myself today with those Collins students, if four or five of them walk away with one or two of those little philosophies, and the most important one I told them today was perfection is lots of little things done well. It's that simple. And to be honest with themselves, I say to my little girl, nighttime is for creating dreams and the daytime is for making them come true. And that's what I really believe. We go to bed every night and we dream. But in the daytime, we have to take those dreams and we have to make them come true. Because if you have a dream, then you have a duty and a responsibility to yourself to make it come true. If you don't make it come true, then you're a dreamer, you're a fantasist. And in the end, you'll be unhappy. So be honest with yourself. And through honesty within yourself, then you'll be honest with your dreams. It's what's within you. And find the confidence to bring it out of you and make it come true. How difficult is it finding people who care as much as you do, who represent you? I mean, you have restaurants in almost every major city, several in London. Here we are today in Nottingham at the Alia Casino. Is it tough finding people with the passion that you had when they were at your stage in that career? Everyone is an individual. Everyone is different. To expect others to be like you, in my opinion, is wrong. Respect people for who they are and for their capabilities and their strengths. I remember when I was a young man, a man called Roland Lahore, who was without question one of the great chefs I ever worked with. Not famous, but a great cook. He said, Marco, in a kitchen, you need your donkeys and you need your artists. If they're all artists, they'll argue and fall out with each other. If they're all donkeys, nothing will ever get done. What he was really saying was respect individuals. Everyone plays an important part in the end product. It's all about what you put on the plate 
It's about making people's evening. People and the media can criticize me as being controversial, but I can assure you I'm not. I'm just a boy who fights for what he believes in. And I'll always stand up and you can knock me down and that's fine. I'll never allow anyone to pick me up. I'll always dust myself down and stand up in my own time and walk straight. Do you ever consider how magnificent your achievements have been, bearing in mind where you came from, as you just described, and how remarkable it is that you're sat here today in your own restaurant, one of many? But remember, not everything I've done in my life has been a success. I'm not that round peg that fits in a square hole. My industry, they respect me, they admire me, and they see what I've done for my world. Okay, I'm one little link within a very large chain but we all contribute. And I was given an opportunity to contribute and I took full advantage of that. And like today, sitting with the young students humbles me. I was once in their position, trying to work it out, trying to unravel it all, trying to better myself, working hard to achieve success, to suppress one's insecurities. It's that simple. And here we are today, and you work around the world. I suppose you could argue your greatest achievement was your children because there you are you talked to me earlier about what it's like to be woken up in the morning and inspire your children has that changed your perspective again I mean we talk about what happened to you at six years old and here we are now you're having to pass that on how has that changed you as well children do change you whether they're your children or they're somebody else's children they change you and I cast my mind back many years and I think of the men and the women who invested in me and believed in me and defended in me. They defended me, you know, but they saw something within me and they backed me and they forgave me. And that's our job. When we get to a certain age in life and we've realized our dreams, bang, let's inspire the young. Let's take the young by the hand and let's guide them. Because the best advice you can give a young person is make sure you put your career into the hands of somebody who's gonna respect you and guide you and protect you and hand you over when your time is up with them. Do you worry now that there is more child obesity than there's ever been? People are more poorly educated than they've ever been. People in the North are struggling more than they've ever done. I mean, I'm from Nottingham, you're from Leeds, same sort of communities. It's not getting better, is it? But I think young people have been exposed to too much too young. So they're growing up too quick. But where's the emotional growth? So there's this imbalance. So part of their brain is 20 years old when they're 16 because they've been exposed to so much stuff, but their emotional growth is 13. And I think this is the imbalance. And there's that sense of entitlement. In many ways, the world we live in today is a better world, but in many ways, it's a sadder world. I mean, you know, if I think of the world that I live in now, that lack of community is gone. I remember being a kid when someone died in the street. We had a whip round for a reef. And all the families would walk to the garden gate to show their respects. Today, where is it? When my mother died, my neighbours took me and my brothers in because my father couldn't cope. Obviously went down the pub and drowned his sorrows. But Mr and Mrs McCarthy for two or three days looked after us. The world has changed and you know, the world that I came from was quite a romantic world, even though we were poor. The world today is It's superficial, it's materialistic. I don't really understand it. Is it fun being you? I've never asked myself whether it's fun being Marco, Um, but it's a full-time job. It's 24 seven being myself. It really is, and I think life's all about being yourself. It's not about trying to be something you're not. My talents are always greater than my ambition, and that's the problem with the world that we live in today. People's ambition, are greater than their talents. And let's not forget, ambition is the most dangerous occupation in the world. It may seem rather strange, me speaking about ambition, but I was never ambitious. And if I was, it was by default, just by doing my job well. Discipline is the key to doing your job well. Staying focused, having the confidence to make yourself vulnerable, to allow the talents within you to be released. That's the key. 
Meeting you today has been a greater thrill than doing this interview because I've loved it. I thank you for your time. You've been so kind and gracious and this will stay with me for a long time. Marco Pierre White, thank you so much. Thank you very much. You're very kind and thank you for your time.